Another aspect of um, topographical map that's important is the labeling. Um, QGIS has an automatic labeling search system, which is usable, but we often find that it has some limitations and we'll have to, um, if we want to really work with making nice maps. And luckily, there are some possibilities for creating more advanced map labeling. When you consider how you do labeling, it's basically when I started university, I think it was the first generation that had computers, and we were all excelled in using different font styles everywhere, uh, and it looked horrendously. So, first of all, don't use too many different font styles. And also, think about the readability. Typically, we have not the luxury of putting everything as 12 points, but typically we have to have things down in 8 points. And therefore, the font size and the font has to be a reasonable, readable font. So don't have used two difficult fonts to read. Uh, although there are reasons for choosing peculiar fonts. Um, if you want to give the name of historical landmarks, you might choose one of these bit more historical looking font phases um, as your naming. So we use the font to emphasize what we are labeling so that their style resembles whatever we are labeling. Um, don't make them too thin because especially um, if it's going to be printed and go through different printing processes, um, they might uh, not be represented so well. And again, with uh, like different font phases, you should also not use too many different sizes of your fonts. Four to six sizes would probably be appropriate. So <clears throat> consider your font phase, make sure that they are read readable. Um, so think about its type of design. Is it the modern layout? Is it a more classical layout? And as we talked about in the video on map design, these f font phases you choose are a very important integral part of your in, uh, design of your map. There are some further rules about what we do when we use uppercase and when we use lowercase. Classically, if we can have um, a label inside a feature, we'll use it in all caps. So, as in Baltimore here. If it's an object, so as this, here we have the town of Baltimore, um, we will use it as a starting capital and a lowercase. Um, and the reason why we have these rules in, is that you can see here in this case B, where Costa Rica has been written with all caps, and most people will probably think that this sea area here out here is called Costa Rica and it is not the land mass in here that's Costa Rica. So try and follow these naming rules that if you're inside you might use capitals and if you are outside use beginning capital and then the rest in lowercase. But again it's a question of is there any chance of confusion as there is in this Costa Rica thing here? Um, this might be um, a bit of a problem. Also, in the further talking about this Costa Rica, um, we have a general rule that is that we have our foreground objects, so the land of Costa Rica, as a straight line like Pacific Ocean is written here, but if it was a background as the ocean normally is, we will write Pacific Ocean on a slanted line here. So, in general, water mass or background elements are created on non-straight lines to indicate that they are background. About labeling linear features, um, often we need to repeat um, the name several times along the feature, as on street names. But don't overdo it so it's at each crossing in the name is repeated. Uh, and there is especially a little trick on rivers 
that if we can, we we'll try and give it a slant. So we we'll use an italic font that is pointing downward along the stream direction as so this river down here is floating up this way here because that's a way of slanting. Here we admit there's we, we couldn't do the slant that way, there's not a negative one. So here it's just in an upright one. When it, we can do it in the right direction, we have giving it the slant um, of the italics in the flow direction. So that is some small tricks that one can use in the labeling to increase the readability. This Spot Rivers is in the advanced corner of labeling. There's another thing that's nice with labels is that we can use them in our to enhance patterns or to hide patterns. So we can use, because the labels are not the geometry itself, we can place them as we feel fit. So this example here is very obvious here where we have where we have placed them like this, we enhance the pattern, or if we place them a bit more randomly around our parts, we can hide the pattern. So the placement of the text is also an important part of our total map design. When talking about how we do this in QGIS, if we go into QGIS and I just have my municipality layer here, and in my default version, if I now label them with my municipality name uh, come on municipality name like that uh, we have first of all we have a little coding problem let's change that to a system so now we've got the Danish characters right um, we can see in this center case here that we have Frederiksberg and Copenhagen labeled in the same unit because Frederiksberg is placed within Copenhagen, so Frederiksberg is an island in here in the large municipality of Copenhagen. And that is, of course, a wee bit annoying. So the default location of the labels was not really good. We could go in and we could work with some of the, the labeling properties to uh, enhance how the labels are placed. Um, and uh, we could, if we give it a free, it will probably uh, solve that problem. Uh, so in this case, we could automatically um, solve our labeling problem. Um, but it still is necessary to be able to do a bit more um, detailed labeling placement. And the first thing we often want to do is that we want to place it, be able to control where it's located X and Y coordinates. And whenever you see these small boxes here, in QGIS, they are called data overwrites. You can substitute a default value with another value, typically an attribute or an expression in the expression calculator. So what we can see is here, if we hover our mouse over our data default overwrites here, is that this is the overwrite for the x coordinate, and it can be a, oops, this is again, a string, an integer, or a double, so a decimal value. So that is how we can specify the coordinates. So if we want to manually be able to place our labels here, what we can do is that we can go in and add some new properties of attributes to our uh, layer. So we'll go down on the fields and we will send it into edit mode and we will add a label x oops, didn't, wasn't typing there a label x 
and it could be an integer or double this, so a decimal value. Uh, I'll just leave it as a integer and give it um, enough. And I'll add a name y. Oops, still not taping. Y. And of course, you can write a comment. Uh, as a whole and to give it enough room so now we have added a label X and a label Y that uh, we can use to place our uh, coordinates in it so save those down and uh, close the dialog box there is a tool bar up here called labeling um, so if it's not visible, you can go right click in the gray area and go and say label. Make sure that's added. So now it's gone. And now I've got it back. If I note that at the moment, I can only, there's only these two that are active. I can, this one brings me into the property labeling. Um, and this one will show me any pin. Um, and doesn't really have because I haven't done anything because these are grayed out. If I take my layer and set it into edit mode, you can now see that I have the ability to do things with my labels. I can uh, add them here. I can change the properties of them, but I can't change these yet. And the reason why I can't change these is that if I go into my label, I haven't specified my overwrite. You can see these haven't gone in here yet and define my default overwrite. So I go in here and change it to my oops label X and my label Y. You can see they are now yellow indicating that they have a overwrite on them. And now suddenly I have these tools available. So I can now go in and start moving objects so I've now got the Copenhagen label and I can move it to somewhere else so if I want to control the visibility of the individual labels which was the possibility we have by clicking on them and saying show hide what we'll have to do is that we'll have to do two things. First, we'll have to create an attribute that can contain our information or whether it's visible or not. We can see what that type of attribute is if we go in and look at the labeling and simply find this attribute that's using and hover over it. So it says that it uh, is a Boolean. It's one, it's true, visible, zero, it's not true. And it can be of this type string, integer or double. Okay, so I want to create an integer with the value 1 if they are visible, 2 if they are not. So I can go in and I can uh, change my properties, add a field. Label visible. Uh, which is a whole number, yeah, and one that's enough for this purpose, and apply. So once I've created my edits, I will um, toggle my editor to make sure that data is saved. So um, now I have a attribute called data visibility, or label visibility, sorry, down here, which is an integer, um, and um, that can then control whether or not my labels are displayed. If I now go in my label properties and take my data right from my label, show label, and set it to label visibility, and say apply, 
what happens is that all labels disappear simply because they are not one remember the rule is that one or is true zero or whatever is false so if we want to add our labels back again what we can do is that we can go in and take our attribute table take our field calculator and then update our label visibility to 1 and uh, now you can see all labels are back again because I have updated the value if I go in and use my change label take this label out here click on it and now I can say do not show apply and it disappears and if I look in my table of attribute here my attribute table you will also see that there is one label over here which is i5 so there it has a value of zero because it has been turned off so I can do a lot of controlling of my labels through these data default overrides. Um, so I can move them, I can change the font, I can do lots and lots and lots and lots of things. And basically what you have to do is that in QGIS you have to look, note if there is a data override so scale, if you hover over it, it can tell you that you can use a string, an integer or a double in this case. If you want a shield, uh, have a drop shadow, it is a yeah, one for true drop shadow, zero for false. So there is just by hovering over each time there is a data overwrite, it will tell you what type of attribute it is, string in this case, and what value you can use. 